This is the story of Kula and Imbuzi. Imbuzi is a goat, and Kula's a baby rhino. They live here, at an animal orphanage, a place where people help baby animals who need someone to take care of them. Everybody at the orphanage, rhinos, zebras, hippos, people, live together as one big family. So Imbuzi and Kula are best friends and brothers. But before they were friends, Kula needed a lot of help. He came to the orphanage when he was only two days old. He was so little, and he missed his rhino family. But everyone at the orphanage helped him feel safe and sound and happy. They pet him and rubbed his back. They fed him milk out of a bottle made just for a baby rhino. And at night, they would lay their mats next to him and sleep. Sometimes they would even let little Kula sleep on top of them. The baby rhino was so small, he could fit on their chests. Sort of. Kula loved the people at the orphanage, and they loved him. But Kula still missed being with rhinos. There were others around, but they were older and bigger. Kula wanted to spend time with them doing rhino things, like eating grass and knocking their heads together and rolling in dirt. But these rhinos were so big and so strong, and Kula was still so little. If they played together, Kula could get hurt. So even though Kula had a big family with lots of people and animals to love him, Kula still felt alone. Until he met Imbuzi. Imbuzi may be small, but he's a tough little goat. Strong enough to bump around all day with a baby rhino. Everyone thought Imbuzi would be a perfect friend for Kula. But at first, they didn't really know each other. And I guess they were a little shy. If Imbuzi looked at Kula, Kula would look away. And if Kula looked at Imbuzi, Imbuzi would pretend not to notice. Nobody is sure exactly when it happened or exactly how it happened. But one day, Imbuzi and Kula started doing this. And the next thing you knew, they were friends. Best friends. Now they can't stand to be away from each other. If Kula gets a bath, Imbuzi will go crazy unless he's there too. Wherever Kula goes, Imbuzi goes. And Kula never feels alone anymore. Imbuzi has helped Kula grow bigger because he taught him how to eat grass. Now Kula is a lot stronger than he was. He can even hang out with the older rhinos without getting hurt. If he wanted to, he could spend all day with the older rhinos now, but he'd rather be with Imbuzi because he's happiest when they're together. And he wouldn't know what to do if they were apart. Kula and Mbuzi are best animal friends. This little one is a wild koala, but he's not where a wild koala should be. Koalas live in eucalyptus trees in the forests of Australia. But wildfires took away this koala's home. And now, he has nowhere to go. And he isn't feeling well at all. So when he saw two campers coming closer, he walked right up to them. It must have been scary to come close to people he didn't know. But this was a very brave koala. Right away, the two could see he needed help. Why else would he have come so close? They decided to become his rescuers. The new rescuers wanted to find him some food to eat and eventually bring him to an animal hospital. That meant they'd need to put the koala into their car. They picked him up as gently as they could. He didn't seem to love it, but he was too tired to complain. With the koala in the back seat, 
they drove out of the burned forest, stopping at the first green tree for a koala snack. He must have been so hungry because he spent the rest of the ride eating. The rescuers knew they had to get the koala to a vet who could help him. But when they arrived at the hospital, it was closed. They weren't sure what to do. So they decided to bring him to their campsite and come back the next day. But would the koala stay with them the whole night? He was a wild koala after all. They brought the koala to a little tree right next to their campsite. They gave him some leaves to eat and made a promise to see him in the morning. When they came back to the tree the next day, the koala had climbed down. He still seemed like he wasn't feeling well, but he was maybe a little hopeful too because his rescuers were back. And this time, they were going to find a vet no matter what. They placed him back in their car and drove him right to the animal hospital. He seemed like he knew he was finally going to be safe. When they got to the animal hospital, it was open. Everybody was so happy. They said goodbye to their new friend and gave him to the veterinarians. These two campers probably didn't start their day thinking they'd become animal rescuers. But sometimes an animal will walk right up to you and ask you to be their hero. When an animal rescuer got a phone call about a pelican with a hurt wing wandering down the road, he knew he had to help her. Nadia's always saved animals. Sometimes he rescues them on the beach, like this seal tangled in a fishing line, or this baby shark who accidentally got washed ashore and needed Nadia to put him back in the ocean. Other times, his rescues take him way out on the water, like when he freed this guy from a plastic bag or helped an injured sea turtle. The turtle's probably thinking, thank you, Nadia. But Nadia's biggest save of all time was this whale who was stranded on the shore. Nadia gathered friends who worked together and pushed the humongous animal into deeper water so she could swim safely away. So as soon as Nadia heard about a pelican who needed help, he searched all over. But he couldn't find her. Until the next morning, when he took his son's school class to the beach and spotted something. It was the hurt pelican. Since there was no animal hospital around, Medea decided to take the hurt bird home, where he would take care of her himself. Before long, Elsa was part of the family, and she was really happy in her new home. Nadia put medicine in her food and helped her practice moving to make her wings strong again. Elsa was basically the queen of the backyard. Elsa loved her rescuer. And best of all, she slowly started to get better. Then, something amazing happened. One day, 
Elsa began jumping and flapping her wings. It was her way of telling Nadia that she was ready to try to fly. So he took her back to the beach where he'd found her. Though Elsa was a little wobbly at first, she started running and flapping her wings until... She did it! She was flying! It was the moment Nadia had been waiting for. It meant that Elsa could live on her own in the wild again, which is where she belongs. Nadia came back to the beach for the next few days to make sure she wasn't still there. And she wasn't. She had flown away. For Nadia, life is about rescuing animals in trouble. And seeing his new friend fly strong and free made him the happiest rescuer on the beach. Hey there! Oops, sorry, jumped too far. Thank you. Okay, let's try that again. <clears throat> Hello! My name is Seamus. I'm a bird. I live in a house, but not a birdhouse. But there's birds here. There's this bird, and this bird, and this bird, and this bird, and that bird, and we all live in the house. But it's not just birds. There's also these things. I don't know what they are. They have wings like birds, but they're not birds, and I'm very confused by them. Until I figure out what they are, I am just going to call them Flappy Tigers. If that is their real name, I think I deserve a prize or something, don't you? But besides birds and the Flappy Tigers, there's also people! Real people! Giant people! They found me when I was a tiny little baby bird. My feathers looked weird because I was a baby. Now my feathers look like this, just a reminder, but they used to look like this. Grown-up feathers, baby feathers, grown-up feathers, baby feathers. Ah, memories. I would have been a goner if I hadn't been found, but I was found, and that's why I'm here talking to you. The people raised me and got me big and strong until I was ready to go back to the wild, but I didn't have a family. So the people became my family. It's pretty great. I really love it here. The birds, the humans, the flappy tigers too, I guess. It's all just the best. I have many luxurious luxuries in this house that are very special and important to me. For example, each and every morning, I take baths in this little dish, which I will now demonstrate. Watch closely, please. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh, I'll get a towel for the mess. Sorry! Don't worry. Nobody's mad about the water. I promise. We're a very close family. They even let me sip right from their drinks. Sip. Slurp. Sip. Um, <laughs> excuse me. You left the lid on. The lid. The lid. The lid on the drink. I wish to sip the drink, but there's a lid on it. <sighs> so forgetful. I love everybody here. We're always doing fun stuff, basically all the time. Like crazy freestyle bird dance dance-offs. Go, 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 go. Dance, dance, dance. And we play this game I invented called Attack the Hand. I'm a getcha, I'm a getcha. It's really just the best over here. I love them so much. But there's one little thing that's maybe not exactly 100% perfect, even though it doesn't really bother me that much. Seriously? What's going on with these flappy tigers? They drink sugar water, but I'm not allowed to drink their sugar water? <laughs> what? And everything seems fine, and we're getting along great, and then they flap! <sighs> I've got more studying to do to crack the case. But that's not the point of this story. The point is that I have a big family, and I love them so much! That's all. That's really the whole point. I love them, and I thought you should know it. Also, when you're a baby bird, sometimes your feathers look different. Also, pigeons are good dancers. Also, lids do not belong on cups. Don't block me from your cups, because I need to sip from them. Thank you.
Also, I love these people so very much. I needed them, and they were there for me. And that's really what family's all about, right? Did I already say the love part? I should make a list. Oh, last thing. Don't forget how to take a bath. It's like this. I uh, might need a mop this time instead. <laughs> That's tiny. I've never seen a baby squirrel before. I've only had those squirrels climb on me because I was feeding them nuts. Peanuts, walnuts, hazelnuts, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> the rescuer found the little squirrel on the sidewalk. What's up, little buddy? He fell from this tree. But where's his mom? This rescuer is going to help find her, no matter what. He hopes the squirrel's mom is nearby, but he can't see her. And he's starting to worry that the baby might be hurt. Even though he may look fine, he may not feel fine. So he decides to take the baby inside to come up with a plan. His little feet and legs look like they're wiggling. And he kind of shrugs when he's touched. So he's probably okay. Baby squirrels are usually pretty tough. But the rescuer doesn't know what to do next. Maybe the rescuer's dog knows what to do. Okay, I don't think he has an idea. The rescuer decides that before he tries anything else, he needs to do everything he can to find this baby's mom. So that's what he did with a towel, and he put the baby on the towel. There you go. And then he taped the box to a palm tree. At first I didn't understand the plan, and then I just was like, Oh, he's taping it to a tree to make it so the mom can see him. He's not sure how long it'll take, but he won't leave until the baby is safe. And neither will his dog. They're a good team. But as the sun sets, he starts to get worried that the mom isn't coming. Then he hears chirping. He thinks it sounds like a mom squirrel. There she is, in the tree. That's gotta be the mom. Her tail is frantically flicking. Hey, don't worry baby, I'm coming. And then finally, she goes to her baby. The squirrels are together again. But then the best thing happened. The mom came back down the tree. I think she's saying, thank you for rescuing my baby. Baby animals fall down from trees a lot. But it's okay because you know what? There will always be rescuers there to help. Even if it means taping a box to a tree and waiting all day with your dog. That's a good boy. Remember, if you see an animal in trouble, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. My mom helps me with the dogs I rescue. <gasps> you are so small! Are those your brothers and sisters? They are very wiggly. You're so tiny, you have to drink milk from a paintbrush. Good morning, little one. Did you enjoy your breakfast? You're way too little to be on your own. But you want to go home, don't you? Don't worry, little buddy, we'll get you there. We just need you to be big enough first. Then we can set you free! One day old. 
How did you get to be so small? I know you're going to grow bigger, but I wish you could stay this size forever. Look at that little nose sniffing the world. I think I'll call you happy. Two days old. Happy is trying very hard to open his eyes. Oh my goodness. You can do it, buddy. You can do it. Oh! Here's the paintbrush again. Time for another snack with those tiny teeth. Oh, nom, 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 nom. There you go. There you go. Five days old. Does somebody need to go to the salon? I think they do. You are the tiniest big mess I have ever seen. Look how handsome! Eight days old. Oh, your first steps! Hey buddy, what are you doing? Are you climbing the mountain? <laughs> oh my goodness! That was going to jump! Good one! That's a good one. Nine days old. Somebody's growing big and strong. Now you're cleaning your face all by yourself. And your tiny little ears are starting to stick up. And so's your funny hair. Time to check on your brothers and sisters. Oh! Tickle time! 13 days old. Let's see if you're big enough to go home. Almost! Just a few more days now. 16 days old. Look at how much cute I can fit into one hand. You're eating by yourself! 25 days old. Oh, I'm gonna miss you guys. Oh my goodness, look at how grown up you are. You're almost ready to be on your own, huh? I think it's time. It's a big day for these little mice. He's going to smell for a little bit first, hey? Okay. Come on, Happy. You can do it. Come on. I know it looks a little different, smells a little different, but it's where you're meant to be. That's it. Welcome to the world. Oh. No, come on. Get out there. Where are you going? Come on out, everybody. Yeah, see? You're doing it! Can you believe you used to be so small? You had to drink from a paintbrush? And now, you're all grown up. Welcome to the world, little buddies. Hey, Casper. You want to be a bear? Like a big, strong bear? Not so fast, buddy. There are a few bear steps you have to take before you can be huge. Bear steps, like drinking from a bottle, taking your first step, playing with a friend, going outside, swimming, and most importantly, climbing your first tree. That's it. Not too bad. I think he could do it. Oh, I think he's hungry. Looks like he's ready for step one. Drinking from a bottle. This calls for a big little bear nap. 
Okay, we'll check back in on you later. Hey, look who's awake. He thinks he's ready to be a big bear, but he's got a ways to go. You got this. Okay, he's getting up again. You're looking stronger, Casper. Can he? He can! He's taking his first steps! Walking bear, coming through. And once you can walk, you can do the next thing big bears do. Play! And get completely covered in hay. You're not quite ready for tree climbing yet, buddy. One bear step at a time. Hey, what's in there? Your first play date. And your first time falling down in front of your friend. Eh, he doesn't care. He's ready to play. You both sound like bears, but you're still babies. Looks like he's ready for the next bear step. Do you remember what it is, Casper? That's right, going outside. And he's running away. He ran away. Found you. Still practicing climbing trees for that last big bear step. Bear dance. That's not one of the steps to becoming a big bear. But swimming is. Well, that is one way to get in. It's time for the last step. You're almost there. You just have to climb a tree. Okay, this right here is some good climbing practice. Just taking a quick break to play tag. And another dance. Where are you going? Mm, Casper? Hey, there's a bear in that tree. A big bear named Casper. Oops, sorry, make that two big bears. Casper, you did it, buddy. You made it through all the steps. You're not a baby anymore. You're finally a big, strong bear. Everybody at the sanctuary loves Little Coconut. She's funny, friendly, and weird. And always makes you smile. When Coconut was only three days old, she was found on the side of the road. She was tiny and all alone. But the people at the animal sanctuary rescued her. Now she's the only little warthog at a huge animal sanctuary. There's so much that's special about the animal sanctuary. And after a lot of rest, warthog belly rubs and hugs, she started feeling great. But it's not quite the same as having a warthog family in the wild. And sometimes, Coconut can feel lonely. Then one day, Coconut found Chundu. Chundu's definitely not a warthog. But Coconut loves being with him. And Chundu loves her too. Chundu 
Chindu's sort of a grumpy grandpa dog. But Little Coconut makes him so happy. He likes showing her the extra special spots in the sanctuary. And teaching her the best parts about being a dog in a pack. Now when they play together, Coconut wags her tail like Chindu taught her. And when they close their eyes to sleep, you can't even tell them apart. Wherever you find Coconut, you find Chindu. Chindu might not be a warthog, but he does his best to make her feel like family. And when the time comes for her to go to a bigger sanctuary, where she can meet other warthogs who will help her grow up to be the big, strong warthog she's meant to be, she knows exactly who will be there to help see her off. Her honorary warthog, Chindu. the kittens find the subscribe button.